Hey everybody, how's it going? So I just started this video and right as I started, Blackberry jumped in my lap. She's right over here. That's Blackberry the kitty. She's allowed here so long as she doesn't nuzzle my microphone and cause noise or bite the XLR cable, which she's been getting slightly better at recently. You know, bite the XLR cable, Blackberry. Also here I have a duck. This duck stands here in solidarity with Eli the Computer Guy. Eli the Computer Guy is someone who's provided lots of videos that help people get into IT, and also he provided me with a video that encouraged me to make board repair videos seven years ago when other people in the industry were saying that that would tank my business. Now, why does a duck represent Eli the Computer Guy? That's a question for Eli, but this duck here stands in solidarity with Eli. Today, what I wanted to discuss is being the asshole. This is something that I discussed in an older video uh, this is a few years old. Successful business owners know when it's right to be an asshole. And uh, I wanted to discuss kind of being the asshole and, uh, and respond to some of the emails that I've been getting recently about uh, what an asshole I've been and how uh, improper it is regarding a, subject, a topic I covered recently. So I went over this laptop and it's coming out from a company called Framework. And I also edited the title of the video. Uh, their website has a lot of stuff on it about how they support right to repair. And I edited it after getting some clarification to claims to because I don't really know if they do yet. You know, again, they want you to be able to replace the parts on it. They want to be able to sell some of the parts to it online. They're okay with you opening it up. And one of the things that I had asked, I was actually very surprised. I was very surprised when I saw that one of them uh, commented. You could see over here. I, I guess you can't because it's cropping out that, that side. But one, I pinned it. It was, and I put a heart on it because I was really happy. You, know, you don't expect companies to respond to this type of stuff. You actually responded to some of the concerns and ideas about the product. They want to create a laptop that is actually fixable. They advertise it based on the idea that when you buy it, you own it, it's yours. We're not going to do, you know, we're not going to pull an Apple and say that we're not going to cover you under warranty because if you replace your hard drive with an SSD, you got to put back the original Hitachi 5400 RPM piece of crap in there before we'll cover it under an extended warranty program for a faulty GPU we put in your machine. I, I like that and I appreciate that and I think that is a step forward. So why am I being an asshole and complaining about the fact that they won't give a straight answer about schematics in the comments? There are people who've said, well, you know, they, they've answered your questions. All they said is we can't really say if board schematics and stuff like that would be available. You should just appreciate that what they're doing is better than what companies like HP or Apple and Microsoft are doing. Now, I think it's important to understand that two things can happen at the same time. I can appreciate the fact that they are going further than other companies have gone in wanting their device to be repairable. That should be commended. However, at the same time, I can't give it that, you know, the, the, the stamp of right to repair approval, even if they put that on their website, if they are going to give a wishy-washy answer when it comes to schematics. And I kind of want to explain why I hold, why I do some of the things I do and why I try to hold myself to those things. So five years ago, I came up with this t-shirt around the time that I had an attorney from Kilpatrick and Townsend contact me about the fact that a schematic was showing up on my channel and that this was something that that, that, that I uh, they encouraged me to stop and they 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 um in a way that kind of made it obvious that it would be a problem if I didn't. And um, the thing that I did is I responded by not only not removing my videos, I, I politely said, if you'd like my videos to come down, you can file a DMCA claim like everyone else, you know, nice, polite, just you want my stuff down, file a DMCA claim, make it public and all that. And I pr produced this t-shirt that says schematics or die. It has an angry picture of Mr. Clinton, likely angry because I cropped his, his butt off in the picture. I used to have this for sale until I, um, people weren't buying it. So when it ran out of stock, I just didn't reorder it. But this, this shirt says schematics or die. It doesn't say schematics, but not really necessary if the company is mildly better than HP or Apple. It doesn't say schematics, but, you know, if, if, if you seem kind of cool enough, we don't really care. It doesn't say schematics, but if there is some sort of weird funky NDA agreement you have to make with a chip manufacturer, then I guess we don't need them. It says schematics or die. And there's a reason that it says that. If you bring me a product to fix, I would like to either A, not have to spend months reverse engineering it to provide you with a $50 to $400 repair, B, not have to rely on someone that risks losing their job and potentially going to prison in their home country to smuggle a schematic on a USB stick or something, hide it in 
in their pants and uh, smuggle it out of the building, potentially risking their job and the their, if they're going to go to prison for it, depending on where they are, uh, years of their life, so that I can fix your product. I think that's screwed up in, in a world where just a few decades ago, most products had schematics inside of them. I think that's bullshit. Schematics or die. There's a reason that I put that there. There's a reason I hold myself to that language. And the reason I hold myself to that language is because as people progress in politics or in movements or whatever, it's really easy to start settling for compromises. You know, again, and, and I, I want this, I want to kind of try to avoid getting into the rabbit holes of particular positions here. But someone's, I remember seeing this one video a while back of a like 25 or 27 year old video of, uh, I think it was Nancy Pelosi advocating for universal health care, something similar to a Medicare for all system. And she was fairly passionate about it. And then in recent years, you can see that that's all but an LOL. And I, I, it's hard for me to tell what happened. Do, is it one of those things where people just kind of try to grind you down over time? And as they grind you down and tell you, listen, what you're advocating for is not realistic, uh, you know, but you may be able to get it if you do this, or, hey, that sounds great, but you may not really understand the reality of this law, and if, if you understand this, then maybe we can kind of work with you, and like, where, or if it's a case where you're just outright getting gigantic campaign contributions from the people that would, that would lose money if something like this were instituted. I can't really tell you what the case is, and I'm not even going to ask you to have an opinion on healthcare legislation for this video. That's aside from the point. The point is, it's really easy to see people that enter politics or activism that get really gung-ho about a cause, and then you have people slowly grind away at them and tell them why that's not realistic, why they're being an asshole, why they shouldn't be so pushy, why, you know, and, and then at the end of the day, you know, 27 years can pass, you can make very little progress on that point, and you might actually start to believe your own bullshit. And one of the things that I mentioned in a video that I did a few months ago is if I ever come out in front of you and and I say that we have succeeded, right to repair is successful, but you're not able to buy an ISL 9240, a CD3217, and you can't get a schematic without going to fucking Venafix or something, then, or some Russian FTP server, then I have failed. Don't listen to me at that point. Stop listening to me at this point. Unsubscribe and find someone else who cares about the cause because at that point, I have clearly sold out. Now, if I come to you and I say, listen, we didn't get that, but we haven't won yet, that's one thing. But if I say, okay, we got this, we won, or right to, if I start associating the right to repair slogan with shit where you still need to go to Venafix to get schematics, or, and that's not, that's not real. And I don't want to do that to you. Now, some people may say that this is me being an asshole, me being uncompromising. And, you know what? Maybe someone needs to be the asshole. Maybe someone needs to be uncompromising so that things move forward. We live in a time where the manufacturers are trying to serialize the components, so even if you take it from an OEM device and put it on another OEM device, it doesn't work without the manufacturer's approval. This is getting to be completely effing ridiculous, and in my opinion at this point, people need to start maybe being willing to be a little bit of a prick or a little bit of an asshole, or maybe a large prick actually in this case. Yeah, that would make sense. Nobody wants a little prick. Maybe a larger prick in this instance so that things actually start to get done because we, you know, realistically speaking, we haven't made much progress. I've made virtually no progress in this over the last seven, eight years that I've been talking about it on YouTube. And I know, I know, I know, I know what my comments are going to say. I know 110% what they're going to say. They're going to say they probably had to sign some NDA because uh, they farmed out the development to someone else. And when they farmed out the development, they made them say they cannot release schematics. I know I can hear you typing that already. And I can already hear myself responding to you typing that with a timestamp to this because you typed it before you listened to the whole fucking video. You know, you do that, that I, I know I, I, I read my comment section. Um, it, I, here's the thing. At the end of the day, I don't care. I don't care why this schematic is not there. I don't care. When I see the word right to repair and we say, hey, will you make schematics available to technicians if they're open to paying for them and you don't answer, I got to stick to my principles. I got to stick to what's on this t-shirt. It does that. That t-shirt does not say schematics, but if they developed it with a partner that may force them into an NDA, then fuck it. It says schematics or die. What that means is if that's the case, then tell us who it is that's not allowing it, and let's work on that. Let's put pressure on that point. Let's figure out who is, you know, who above you in the chain is keeping you from being able to release it. Let's put pressure on them. Let's try and fix this. This as a movement is not something that I think is going to go anywhere if people settle for half-assed. 
And you can see, if you if you turn on television, if you read the news, if you look at what goes on in normal politics, you can see what happens when people just, you know, go, get a, go, go along to get along or get along to go along or however the saying goes. Nothing happens. Nothing changes. You need to be willing to be called an asshole and you need to be willing to be uncompromising in your principles to some extent. There are certain areas where I will compromise. There are certain areas where I will tweak things. There are certain areas where I'll say, okay, you know, I wanted this. You want that. We can work on this. But when it comes to schematics, no. Schematics or die. The t-shirt is very clear. And the reason that I made these t-shirts, it's incredibly important. Because I wanted to draw a line in the sand so that if in the future I were to become like one of those compromising politicians or if in the future I were to lose my principles at any point, there was something that someone could point to to say that, no, no, this used to be what you believed in. Now you believe in this. What's up? Because again, my, my thoughts are going to evolve over time. My, you know, the, the, the nuances and how I see certain political issues are going to evolve over time. I'm going to change as a person over time. But there are certain basic fundamental principles that I don't think should change. And as a movement, if I see the word right to repair, schematics or die. It's very clear. We can discuss pricing for things. We can discuss quantity or availability and all sorts of other stuff that we can discuss. Schematics or die. That is not something that I'm going to compromise on. And I don't think that anybody else should either. I'm able to simultaneously say, this is really awesome that you want to make a product that's repairable, where shit's not glued together, where people can buy the parts from you, where people are encouraged to open it up. That's cool. By the way, I see you wrote right to repair there. <laughs> and, you're, and, and you gave me a PR answer on what the schematics are going to be available. Somebody's got to be the asshole. And it might as well be me. It's not like this channel's sponsored by anybody. It's not like people send me review samples of things that are on a regular basis. It's not like I, you know, I, I have a little banner that says this is brought to you by Audible or ExpressVPN. I say what the hell I want to say, and uh, that that gives me the freedom, you know, being my having my own business, not having sponsors when it comes to YouTube, gives me the freedom to be able to say what I think. And yeah, schematics or die. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And uh, for those that said that I'm being an asshole by doing this, I will own it 110%. I am happy being the asshole. I think somebody has to be the asshole. It's definitely not going to be Blackberry or my little rubber ducky. I love this little rubber ducky. The only thing I'd like more about it is if when you squeezed it, it made a noise. Whoa! I didn't know it made a noise! Holy shit, it scared Blackberry. Wow, that sounds evil. I thought it was going to make a squeak noise. That sounds fucked up. This doesn't sound like a happy duck. This sounds like Eli when he talks about Susan W. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll put a link in the description. This really sounds like Eli when he talks when he thinks of Susan W. <laughs> Whoa. Sounds like a lot of hot air though. <laughs> <laughs> hey. She said it, not me. Because I remember he said how how is it such a, you can wind up with such a nice and kind woman? Anyway, that's it for today. As always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.